Hello, I'm Anthony. One of the difficulties we face as musicians is blank canvas syndrome, staring at an empty cue base, absolutely bereft of inspiration. Today, I'm going to show you a method of using the acoustic agent styles in Groove Agent as a springboard to get up and running. I'm going to show you various save points of this project that I'm working on at the moment. And I've got to the point where I've got the beginnings of a song and I used an acoustic agent style to get me there. Now, a very quick review of what an acoustic agent style is. Groove Agent is separated into multiple different kits, but the predominant division between them is Beat Agent Kits and Acoustic Agent Kits. And Acoustic Agent Kits emulate live drum kits, and they behave differently to Beat Agent Kits. One of the things that you get with them um, are these styles, which are multiple different grooves bundled together under an umbrella to give you basically an entire drummer's performance on a particular theme. So I've loaded this style called Permanently Off. And if we jump over to the pattern page, you get an opportunity to audition all of those different grooves. Now, for the most part, styles are separated into a very formulaic pattern set. You get 16 main grooves, each with a numbered complexity from one to 16. So each of these, as I'm moving this little button to the left and right, this complexity number here is representing different grooves. So I'll just press play in Groove Agent and get complexity number one, main beat up and running. Sounds like this. Every time I move this little marker forwards, we're going to get a different pattern. So now we've got an additional complexity. You can hear it becoming increasingly complex all the way up to 16, which is the most complex, you know, new pieces of kit have been introduced. Quite clearly significantly more complex than number one. In addition to your 16 main patterns, typically we have eight fills. So we're ignoring this complexity box now. That's got nothing to do with anything. If I press play now, you're going to hear fill number one. Here's fill number eight. And there are four endings and four intro patterns. So that's 32 different grooves all bundled together in this thing called a style. Now I like to use rhythms to inspire me when I'm starting to write a song, I'll basically hook into a particular part of the groove and that will help me get up and running. And that's exactly what I've done here. Can you see in the top of Cubase, we have this mass of purple data. This is basically every single pattern in this single preset, the permanently off preset. So if I jump to this MIDI part called main one and play this instead, so I'm not playing Groove Agent now, I'm playing Cubase instead. It's exactly the same groove as we heard when I pressed play inside Groove Agent. So I basically turned every one of these patterns into MIDI parts. That's very simple indeed. I'll just replicate one of them for you. If I select the main tab, complexity number one, we have this little button called drag MIDI pattern to host sequencer. And it does exactly that. So I've done that for every single pattern, basically move the complexity slider up to number two. Now, if I drag this one out, that's going to be the, se the second groove. Now, as you can see, I've renamed all of these grooves and I've just thrown those away. But don't worry, I, I won't save any of this. So I've basically dragged every single MIDI part out and then named them corresponding to what they are inside the style. It might seem tedious, but it takes no more than 10 minutes to do the entire thing. And from that point onwards, I've got a complete template of the entire groove and I don't have to go inside the style editor at all. I can operate entirely in the MIDI domain inside Cubase. I'll replicate one more MIDI extract just to make absolutely clear we know what we're talking about. So here are my, uh, my eight, eight fills. I'm going to delete fill number four and then select fill number four in the style editor. Whatever is selected in this editor, if I drag that MIDI pattern out into the host sequencer, that's the MIDI data that's going to be transferred. Now, I don't want to turn this into a huge Groove Agent tutorial, but basically all of these settings, every single setting that you see will have an impact on the MIDI that gets extracted. All I do is make sure that my intensity, which is the volume, is always at 100. So when I export this stuff into Cubase, I've got complete control. I've basically got the groove as loud as it can be, basically essentially normalized. I can then obviously reduce the volume uh, if I so desire. But if I drag that out there, this fill here, that's fill number four, and then I've simply renamed it like that. Easy as you like. At this point, we basically don't need Groove Agent anymore. We've got the entire style in MIDI, and here it is. 
I haven't even begun the process of writing the song yet. All I'm doing is laying my tools out in front of me, making sure I've got everything I need in order to do the job. Then I'm gonna get up and running. And that's this first save file taken care of. We can now throw this one away. I'll load project number two up and show you the next stage. As you can see, it's exactly the same project behind the scenes. All I've done is imported a virtual bass instrument. This is the Chapman stick from Omnisphere's trilogy library. One of my favorite toys to play with at the moment. Now we're ready to start writing music. I'm going to hang off the acoustic agent's easiest pattern, the simplest pattern, main, bar, main pattern number one. I want to get something up and running that uses the core elements of the drum kit. If we add articulations and complexity on later, that's fine. When we're into full songwriting mode, I'm interested in that stuff. But for now, I'm only interested in the groove. What's the heart of the groove? Well, you get that from main one. This is the simplest possible pattern that this groove agent style has to offer. And so sat at my virtual bass instrument, I come up with a really simple repeating pattern. Now this pattern, because it's so simple, is gonna basically overlay perfectly happily over any of these grooves. Let's jump up to main 12, which is increased complexity. Let's listen to those two together. And this is the next challenge. Having come up with that simple idea that hangs off main one, so it's the it contains the essence of the of the drum rhythm's DNA, I now need to audition all of the various mainline patterns against that groove to see what's a good candidate. The bass line is actually now the most important thing in this song. That's the only original thing that's happened so far. Everything else has been dragged completely dry out of groove agents. So the bass line now takes over as the master and the dominant force. I'm going to run through every one of those patterns, not now, this is what I've already done. Run through every one of those patterns, audition them all against the bass line and cull them down to a set of uh, grooves that actually work with this bass line that I've come up with. So I'm now using a simple bass line as a filter to decide very arbitrarily which grooves stay and which grooves go. That's safe file number three, back in a moment. Now this might seem like painting by numbers Where's the originality? Where's the creativity? Well, all I'm doing at the moment is I'm using really simple heuristics, absolutely basic pattern recognition to daisy chain my way from one very simple step to another very simple step. Eventually, I'm going to get to the stage where I'm being genuinely musically creative, but I'm still not there yet. All I've really done is come up with this very, very straightforward bass line. And now, as you can see, I've thrown about half of the patterns away. Any pattern that I pick, here's main four, randomly selected. It's gonna work with this bass line. There's nothing that's jarring with it. That main 12 that I played earlier had some tom fills that I didn't like. Notice that it's not here. Needless to say, all of this is totally subjective, but that's the point. So all of the grooves that I'm selecting, they just work really nicely in conjunction with that incredibly simple bass line. And similarly with the fills, I only actually selected three fills. There was an, an intro piece, interestingly enough, that can perfectly happily function as a fill. Just because it's called intro, I'm, I'm not constrained to use it as a fill. It's just a drum rhythm. Let's have a listen to it. Absolutely usable. So my toolbox is complete. This is basically all of the rhythm information I'm going to use to build this song that I haven't even really started writing yet. Now what I want to do is start coming up with some kind of basic ideas for a song structure. That's the next stage. And it was at this stage where I was thinking, how is this thing gonna progress? How is it gonna evolve? And I'm sort of feeling in a far more linear fashion now. I'm listening to the thing in real time, trying to get some kind of impression of how long I think I want this piece to last, what sort of vibe it's gonna have. I realized I wanted it to be faster. I've slightly sped up the, the BPM, we're at 83 now. And it was during this process that I honed in on main eight as being my favorite rhythm out of all of the ones on offer. So I'm applying a little bit more discretion now. I'm starting to choose favorites. So main eight sounds like this. I really like 
those off beats. You see that I've chosen various different patterns and I've replicated each one of them to give me some sort of stability, eight bars to play with in each main section before a new, uh, a new rhythmic idea is introduced not remotely interested in developing the bass line yet. It can stay static for a goodly while yet. I'm starting to suspect at this point that I'm being imbued by the spirit of Hawkwind. I feel like this wants to be sort of a, a, a long, slow, evolving, very simple, you shouldn't do that kind of thing. Now coming out of main eight, I've got some handwritten notes, basically some of the flavor of each of these patterns. Main nine is essentially a drop. We basically lose the snare. Let's have a look at it in the editor. Yeah, there's very little snare in this main pattern. So this is where there's going to be an energy drop. So even though I haven't actually written any of this music yet, I'm starting to get an impression of what I'm going to want to do with it. So it's the same groove, it's the same rhythm, but the vast majority of the snare hits have gone. And I've made a note that that's an interesting thing that I'm going to want to think about when I get into writing the song. I've also started having some ideas about how I can connect main patterns with fill patterns. So here's a couple of examples of the kind of thing that I like to do. I auditioned each of the various fills. Remember me saying intro four was a perfectly usable fill. It's actually taken the place of a fill. It's the last bar of this groove. So I've taken the main eight pattern, chopped up the last bar, thrown it away, dropped a one bar intro four in there, glued them both together and renamed it to remind me what's going on. You can't glue all of these drum parts together or, you know, all of your naming conventions will disappear out the window. But as you can see at the moment, I'm very carefully keeping all of these MIDI parts distinct. So here we go with three bars of the, the main pattern. And then this last bar will be the intro. Acting as a fill. Back to the main eight pattern. Another three bars of the same groove this time with fill seven at the end. So now I've got a new template to play with, a new eight bar kind of superstructure that's been constructed by three of those different elements inside the style. So the style is still very much informing all of my musical decisions. That's basically the rhythm done. I'm, I'm highly unlikely to mess very much with it from this point onwards. I'm just sticking bigger and bigger building blocks together to allow me to build entire verses or entire choruses. I'm going to jump over project number five because it turned out to be a bit of a dead end. I'll jump to project number six and discuss very briefly what I did in the interim. It's very difficult to be clairvoyant when I'm preparing and making these videos. I basically have to save files when I think something interesting might have happened. Project file number five was simply playing with a new pattern. I'd created a new ending with a combination of fill, fill four plus ending two. Subsequently, I've decided I don't like it, but this is what it used to sound like. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking when I thought that that was good, but it doesn't fit in with the style of the song. And so that's going to get abandoned. As you can see, it's off in effectively no man's land at the moment. But this project is the biggest musical advance because this is where I actually start writing music. And this was done basically in a, a, a pretty quick flurry of activity, which is why we've got loads of new stuff to talk about. So I'm going to mute a couple of things. First thing that I did was pick up the guitar. I think I'm probably going to come up with something else for an introduction where main one is running the simplest of the grooves, but I decided to start at main two. And over the course of this 16 bar pattern, you can see that I've repeated a four bar groove twice. So main two and then main four. Underneath that very slightly evolving drum pattern, we've got an, still the absolutely consistent bass line. I've still not done anything with that at all, but I wanted to start coming up with actual music. Now, when I'm recording these guitar parts, or basically any music, if I'm playing to a groove like this, I'll throw the groove as loud as I possibly can. It will basically be up here when I'm doing the recording. So I can still hear my guitar as I'm playing it, but that kick drum is really kicking the snare absolutely full in my face. I've obviously subsequently to that mixed it to the point where it's not particularly, you know, doing your head in. Let's bring in the, the response now. So this is the call 
and then I've recorded a response to it as well. And that really simple drum rhythm notches up, second pattern round, there's the extra hats. Obviously I'm on cycle here at the moment, it's going to carry on evolving to five and six. Let's do that. I do have a synth line as well. No idea how the structure of the song is going to go, that's not the point. Stepping up every eight bars, and here finally we're at main eight. No idea what's going to come next. This is the virtual drop. snare essentially disappears, very sparse hits, no idea what's going to happen there, but that's the beginnings of a song, I've used groove agents, these really really simple patterns to get me up and running and I'm now writing music and I feel like I've baby stepped every single step of that process has been one tiny little baby step on top of another. I never did anything complicated. I don't feel like I've done anything particularly impressive, but I do feel like I'm up and running now. You know, this song is underway and it's all thanks to that Groove Agent style. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Please hit like if you did. I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.